So Roger, the movie we're going to review today was released in 2019, a pretty impressive year. I mean, at the time of this movie's released in UK, US and World World Cinemas, we were recovering from Endgame, the concluding part of a very, very long Marvel uh, movie series. And frankly, audiences around the world could have been forgiven to have missed or dismissed this gem, a movie called Yesterday, written by Richard Curtis, directed by Danny Boyle from the story from Jack Barth. Yes, and do you know what, Pascal? I first watched this film literally two weeks ago, and until that point, I'd never, ever heard of it. Not even heard of it. So not only did Endgame completely wipe it out for me, <laughs> it may it may even have, uh, have not existed at all. But as I say, I came across it, watched it a couple of weeks ago on Netflix and absolutely loved it. And that's a reaction from everybody. Uh, I, I will confess, I was one, so you missed it, I dismissed it. And I feel very guilty. And if Danny, Richard and Jack are listening to this podcast, I offer my apologies sincerely because we watched it last summer during lockdown. And it was, I'm sure you'd agree, a joyous moment. Two hours where really you are feeling lots of emotions for the different characters but you're tapping your foot through across the songs from the Beatles and if you know them well enough like my wife you sing along as well yeah now it's interesting I have to say Pascal I've never been a massive Beatles fan so when we did see this pop up on Netflix my initial thought was well I've never heard of it for, for a start secondly my initial impression from the synopsis was that it was a jukebox musical along the lines of Abba's um, Mamma Mia or Sunshine on Leith, which is the Proclaimers songs, or, or, or We Will Rock You, which was based on Queen. So I imagined that there was this sort of made-up story which they'd force-fed the uh, the Beatles songs into, but it's not quite like that. They've come up with a, a bit of a science fiction uh, premise where basically there's some sort of solar flare or something which wipes the memories of everybody in the world that the Beatles have ever existed, apart from one guy. And so he spends the film effectively <laughs> nicking the Beatles songs <laughs> and becoming an international world class rock star as a result but you're right the tunes are banging uh, I, th I thought some of the versions of the songs in the film were actually quite a lot better than the Beatles originals now I'll get shot down and stones will be thrown at me by real Beatles fans but you have to understand that I'm starting as a non-Beatles fan so to me the music stood out I know some people think that the versions in the film were actually not very good but to me they did stand out for me, uh, as a dismisser of yesterday, once again, I feel very guilty. Uh, I've been actually a, a lifelong Beatles fan. Indeed, my very first LPs, both for my 11th birthday, were the volume one and two, the best of the Beatles, given to me with uh, together with my record player. Back in the days, you know, there was a record player where the lid was the yes. speaker and you had to kind yes. of unhook. Um, and I listened to those two LPs over and over again. And, I, I do, and my dad used to listen to it on this uh, kind of around the house and so on. So, but I, did, I was so worried that it, they were not going to do justice to the song of the Beatles that I kept away. But also, I made the mistake to think it was, oh, well, Richard Curtis equal love romantic comedy uh, I'll wait and I'll watch it uh, another time and now I wish I'd seen it on the big screen indeed if there was ever an IMAX version so you could get those Beatles song blasting through the IMAX theater that have been just absolutely delightful but what I loved about this film it combines science fiction and looks at the butterfly effect you know what would happen if it's a um, very very well told love story but also it does attack quite directly the crazy world of music production, uh, the greed of the managers and producers. And there is one really moment which I laughed out loud, which is the ultimate marketing meetings of all, market, uh, of all meetings, where he walks in the room as he's kind of still timid and like, slightly lost soul uh, as an artist. And there's like a sea of people around this boardroom table just making crap decisions and all agreeing with a big boss for fear of losing their job. I just it was so well observed and I have no doubt that um, Danny Boyle has sat in many meetings like this. Oh yeah, I, that was an absolute laugh out loud moment, that marketing meeting. We've all been in that marketing meeting where everybody <laughs> and his dog are in the room 
putting their two penneth worth in and and just making things ever more complicated and and rubbish. I mean, y- yep, y- written by Richard Curtis, as you said. So uh, interesting. I mean. I do think it bears the hallmarks of Richard Curtis films. I mean, the love story is well played out, but you can see, you know, the the sort of uh, parallels with Four Weddings and a Funeral, Notting Hill, Love Actually, mm. um, you know, even the even the music industry elements, which as as you said are extremely well realised, and you realise what a hotbed of um, corruption it ap- actually is. But even that has parallels with Love Actually and the Billy Max uh, sections of Love Actually, where he's putting that single together, uh, you know, the Christmas song. Uh, so it definitely does feel to me like a Richard Curtis film. There was uh, we're going to talk about marketing very shortly but one thing i wanted to mention was also the supporting actors so mm. we've got um himesh patel who's um, playing jack malik superbly i mean what what a performance both in terms of acting but also singing and i thought lily james played the superb role um where, with ellie who not only is the original manager but she's desperate for him to write a song just for her and i thought it was played out superbly but you've got rocky the hapless waster you know follows jack around i thought his parents the, 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 when he tries to play let it be and he kept being interrupted by the phone or the neighbors and so on and they just completely uh, lost you know the um, the plot i thought it was just so so good because it's about the fact that it's about the beatles but it's looking at his life and the multi multiple relationship he has from his parents to the love interest to the managers the character plays deborah which is a cross between um fraser crane's agent and corilla deville frankly so it was really well well put together yeah i i, I i'm gonna have a second shout out for lily james here actually because she seems to have been in so many films recently i mean she was in the second mamma mia film she was in a film recently called the dig there was another film about a a, 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 a right she was playing a writer going to to jersey during the war she just seems to have been in everything but in this film she was acting a socks off Mm. absolutely but the character as you said was so believable i think quite a lot of people will end up watching this film and end up with a crush on on lily james she was that good so let's begin our marketing review with a tagline which i I want to really really applaud here this is how you keep it short but actually you bring power everyone in the world has forgotten the beatles everyone except jack I mean, this is how you do it, isn't it? This is how you summarize something. And I just oh. wish that I could do something like this. I mean, again, it, this is the four mash get smash of film taglines, isn't it? It's just so good. The whole film encapsulated in what? 13, 14 words? <laughs> it, 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 yeah, absolutely. And, and as we've said earlier in the show, it meets my rules for simplicity and believability and it's so engaging as well it just sucks you in so in terms of the marketing campaign this movie was uh, scheduled for release in september 2019 but then the powers that be went no we're going to go ahead and bring it forward to june now i can imagine that for the marketing team i'm a moment of oh crap we've lost three months in a marketing campaign we have to bring everything forward into the gantt chart or the excel spreadsheet and at first i thought oh, that must be because they wanted to capture the uh, summer audience roger uh, and piggyback that but in fact it was actually a lot more practical than that it was simply to do with the fact that in the autumn 2019 the rights to the beatles song would revert back to paul mccartney and sony and many others wanted to make sure they could make the film just before Yes, I mean that, that makes sense, of course, doesn't it? And, uh, and we've talked about copyright strikes and all of that sort of thing earlier in the show today. So yeah, you can understand why they had to do that. Um, with lawsuits flying around everywhere and, and this this way and that. But I don't know about the marketing for this film, Pascal. I mean, I love the posters. Uh, obviously, the 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 obvious thing to do was to replicate the Abbey Road album cover of him crossing the 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 zebra crossing across the street and that's lovely i mean it's such a nice poster so simple again the other one i think is a little bit more psychedelic the one with lily james in it's 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 quite uh vibrant in its color Uh, but that includes the tagline that you've uh just described and i think that that sells it extremely well um and they, they they did focus mainly on the music 
Mm. Now, again, I said I completely missed this film when it first came out. Had I seen some of this advertising where the music is such a key part of not only the trailer but obviously the posters and they they also did quite a few um, uh, documentary style interviews as well across the world I would still have been convinced that this was a jukebox musical as opposed to a genuine story now maybe they felt that they couldn't include all the science fiction stuff within the within the marketing because that would potentially have put people off so maybe they decided that they didn't mind that it appeared to be a jukebox musical but i think had i seen the advertising for this back in 2019 and given the fact i'm not a massive beatles fan i'm not sure this marketing would have got me to go and see the film well, what is interesting is that I have never seen the first poster you described, you know, the Abbey Road kind of uh, rep- mm. rep- production. I saw the second one, which I think has been really the leading the marketing campaign. I do wonder whether the first poster was targeting the Beatles fan as an audience. Mm. Mm. And then the second poster was going to target, you know, more, forgive me, normal moviegoers where the Beatles hook wasn't really for them. The hook was more around the love story, the the kind of sci-fi element to it. And the fact that it was directed by Danny Boyle because I think his movies are mentioned in in, mm-hmm. in, in the copy as well as Richard Curtis element. But uh, they had to move quick because in February 2019, they released the first official trailer, which interestingly, I'm going to argue, is rather long. We are approaching, yeah. are we not three minutes, if not more, and giving away a lot of the stories such as, you know, the the, the concert on, on the beachfront, the Wembley bit and so on. So I felt there was a, really a trailer that gave a lot away, but maybe that they had to do so with a shorter campaign where they no longer had a September release, but with a June release. And then they moved really fast. So you had June... Then from the kind of May onwards, they had to quickly attend festivals, which went well for them because they actually got some awards uh, at some of the uh, kind of more independent film festival, and they had to do that very quickly. But then June, which is where the movie was released, they went really, really hard on publishing uh, extended video clips, Mm. on uh, featurette interviews. I mean, it was really, really condensed between May and June. And I wonder whether... In a way, they did pay a small price with regard to the the lack of exposure and the lack of attendance. Now, let's let's be uh, correct. This has been a successful movie. They made a lot of money, for sure. But what I say, people could have missed it or dismissed it because I think maybe the the marketing campaign suffered a little for being so compressed. Yeah, I think that's right. I, 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 I I do like some of the stuff that they did. I mean, the Danny Boyle, I think, talking about how they I mean they made a film about the Beatles that didn't have the Beatles in it at all although there is an appearance by John Lennon in it which I think is extremely well done and of course the premise being that if the world's completely forgotten it's not even that the world has forgotten about the Beatles it's that the world didn't even know the Beatles existed then the possibility that he was still alive I think was an incredibly in interesting concept uh, it also leads to a major goof in the film as well you know the lead character thinks about uh, a song he performed at school by his favorite band oasis and this is one of the reasons why he got to know the lily allen character but as when he's doing part of his research to try you know he, he's on google and he can't find any reference to the beatles having ever existed he does the same search with oasis and oasis <laughs> have disappeared from the world yeah. as well and yet he remembers himself doing this um, gig at school, but so does Lily Allen. And she shouldn't remember that because Oasis never existed. So but, hey, I, I know you mean me. Lily James, by the way. Um, Lily James. We yeah, also I very, say Lily very Allen fond for of Lily Allen. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, just in terms of the, the June kind of, um, you know, push for, for the film. There's some things I wanted to point out because we are looking for lessons, of course, Roger. One yep. thing that we don't mention often enough in film marketing is the business of film uh, selling and distribution. Mm. So mm. actually Universal and Sony Pictures, I suspect, attended and organized a screening of the film at Cine Europe. Cine Europe is like a trade show, which I know sounds mm. odd, oh, you should have a trade show, but of course, films like products and services are sold to distributors and you have to pitch and, and show it. And not only did they show the, the movie during a um, trade event, but the two stars, Amish Patel and Lily James, 
did a 60 second summary of the film, which is now available on YouTube. And once again, back to brevity, back to simplicity, try and summarize you know, whatever you do in 60 seconds. But also, uh, I don't think that this is something that people do enough. You know, they, they don't summarize sufficiently what they do as teaser content before they published the full features. So I thought there was a little lesson to take away here. And the other thing they did, which I thought was absolutely lovely for a PR stunt, but a good one, they used uh, thousands of extras in some of the scenes. I mean, the, the, the one I mentioned where they do the um, kind of rooftop concert uh, in a seaside resort, and they organize a screening for the local people who had volunteered their time as extra, which I thought was just a lovely touch. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And and for me, the, the the two lessons that I got from the marketing of this is, you know, the fact that they did focus entirely on the music mainly in their in their promotion. And and why wouldn't you when it's a film about Beatles music? But you've really got to focus on your standout features. Um, as opposed to muddying the water with all sorts of conflicting different messages or or trying to put too much out there. And I think the simplicity of the messages in this film, the aforementioned tagline that you've said, you know, really stands out. And again, a film about pop culture, again, reinforces to me that, you know, how good is it when you can build in pop cultural references to your content? You know, you uh, your content... Uh, create a shout out today with somebody who uses um, Star Trek to put across ideas. Using pop culture is so strong in your marketing. Obviously, you've got copyright issues to be careful with, but most people are attracted to some form of pop culture, whether it's Star Trek, whether it's the Beatles, whether it's Coronation Street, whether it's EastEnders, Love Island, whatever it might be. And it's recognisable. And if you can leverage that recognisability of something, then it's going to make your marketing stand out. The thing that they did, which you would expect, but again, I don't think we do enough when we take it back to our world, is countless TV interviews, radio interviews, even attending web series to talk about the film. It must have been exhausting. I'd love wanted to see a... <laughs> a program of activity for a film and look at you know what Richard Curtis and Danny Boyle and all the others had to subject that, that themselves through but talking about your content and promoting the content is not something that we do sufficiently back in the world of business I wanted to spend just a quick moment as well on digital being my specialism Roger and I must confess, I was very hopeful because I thought 2019, brilliant, very recent film compared to the others we reviewed, Roger. There would be lots to talk about. Uh, not really. To begin with, disappointingly, the official website is no longer live. I'm saying to the likes of Danny and Richard, in fact, it's not fair, it's not their role to distribute and sell in, any longer, but to the distributors, give the job to Roger and I. We will run this website and we will find things to do with it beyond just the push. They had, of course, the Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter, and sadly, they stopped reusing them pretty much in the round of November 2019. So it feels almost once the campaign was over, it was over. But if you think about the fact that it's about the Beatles, if you think about the movie, if you think about the many things you could really go and explore, you could keep the social media account running for quite some time. It, uh, you could do competition with local schools to sing things from the Beatles. You could do um, you know, all sorts of surveys. You could really, really get artists to publish their rendition of songs from the movie online. And the list goes on and on. And I know it may come across very critical, Roger. It's just sheer frustration that as a, as a marketer where we live and operate in sectors where it's hard, it's easy, and they're not doing it. And I'd love one day to be told, to be proven wrong, and, and maybe they are, they either are restrictions, Roger, or indeed it's just the way the industry works. But one thing they've done well, however, is keep the YouTube um, content going more so uh, primarily on the official Universal Pictures. So, for example, they released all the soundtrack from yesterday, 27 songs. They are online now for free on mm. YouTube. They've carried on doing interviews, actually, f uh, a year later after the film was released officially with all the actors and producers. So the YouTube bit is working well, but no one has actually taken the trouble to even publish that onto the official website on social media. So... Yes, yet again, you know, so many possibilities, and yet they don't, they're just not being seized. 
No, I got a 404 error when I tried to visit the website. You would have thought that if they kept some of the content on YouTube, that they would be linking it to the website and to the Facebook and to the Instagram. And if you think about what we talked about last week, where Snatch's, you know, Guy Ritchie's Snatch films effectively had a 20-year marketing campaign because they've kept everything up to date. Uh, I think it's a, it's a world of difference. It is. Well... Like I said, people will be forgiven uh, to have missed or dismissed this movie, but it is a joyous experience to watch yesterday. I watch it twice now, and I can see myself, Roger, honestly, watching it easily once a year. Uh, the, the storytelling is excellent. The songs are absolutely brilliant, and it combines everything, science fiction, romance, and comedy. Um, well done. And you know, I'd imagine that o- over time, it will continue to kind of garner fans for, for, for this wonderful piece of work. I agree. I agree. And it's got Lily Lily um, James in it, not Alan. Lily James. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, Roger Edwards, this was episode 47. Thank you very much for being such an amazing co-host. To you as listeners, thank you for your support. Please leave comments, suggestions in the usual places. Until the next one. Go out there and make sure your marketing is done right. I was Pascal Pintoni and it was Roger Edwards. Bye for now.